Hello shrimp keepers, my name is Rick and today I'll be covering how temperature affects shrimp along with the role that heaters have in your tank. In this video, we'll try to answer two questions for you. The first is when do you need a heater in a cherry shrimp or other Neocaridina tank setup? The second is when should you have a heater? So those are slightly different questions and we'll get into some of the nuance there in just a second. To start off, when do you need a heater? So Neocaridina do best at temperatures ranging from 65 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Cherry shrimp and other Neocaridina do best in these conditions because that's what they've evolved for. They're just like humans. We evolved for certain climates. While we've created clothes, air conditioning, all that sort of stuff to be able to survive in much more extreme temperatures, being able to go to the Antarctic now, Mount Everest, the Mojave Desert. Shrimp, unfortunately, have not done that. I don't know why, but they don't have clothes. They're just not, they didn't get, it's not, that's not the way things worked out. So that's not to say they can't survive in conditions lower than that. I've heard of them living in outdoor ponds as low as 50 degrees Fahrenheit at times, uh, as well as up to 90 degrees for shorter periods of time. But that doesn't mean that they'll thrive. Our goal is to make sure that your cherry shrimp actually thrive and reproduce and just live happy, healthy lives. Essentially, if you're uh, if the area where you're keeping your tank is able to maintain a water temperature of, again, between 65 to 85 degrees, then you do not need a heater. The one condition of that is that your temperature should be fairly stable. It's not like your colony is going to do well if the temperature is ranging from 65 to 85 every single day. That's why it's important to consider where the tank is actually placed. Uh, if it's in a room close to an air conditioner or it's close to a heating vent uh, or say it's close to a window, then in that situation, if the window is left open frequently uh, during colder months, it's going to get colder naturally and during hotter months, it'll be hotter. Those temperature fluctuations are more of a concern for smaller tanks compared to larger tanks. So especially when you're getting into one to five gallon range, that's where you have to really be concerned about rapid temperature fluctuation because they can happen with such a low volume of water. Even if your tank does maintain relatively stable conditions in the recommended ranges, there are still reasons to have a heater in your tank. So let's go over that. Shrimp keepers have a variety of different goals. Some of us just want to have a stable, healthy colony that we can look at and enjoy. That's fantastic. Others may want a huge, like fast growing colony so you can get those feeding frenzies that you get on YouTube or they're trying to actually breed for profit. In this case, a higher temperature actually leads to faster growth rates, faster breeding, then obviously you can sell more shrimp. According to a research paper by Carolina Tropea, the ideal temperature for breeding is about 82 degrees Fahrenheit or 28 degrees Celsius. This is the fastest growth without detrimental effects on the offspring over the three temperatures studied. That being said, multiple pregnancies do have an impact on female shrimp, as noted in another paper by Tropea that will also be linked below. In the discussion, she states that females who have multiple spawns or pregnancies have lower body weight, fat and protein concentrations, and lower survival in comparison to non-reproductive females. While that is not necessarily a problem if you are trying to get as many shrimp as you can, it is something to be aware of, especially if you are hoping to get the best looking shrimp for competitions. Higher temperatures do come with some potential problems. One is that the bacterial growth rate in your tank is just going to be faster. So if you do get an infection, then your shrimp is going to die faster, going to release ammonia faster, and so it could cause an ammonia spike. The other thing is that your colony is growing faster. Great but whenever the population is densely packed, whether that's humans in a mall, in an elevator, if someone's coughing, you don't wanna be there because you are much more likely to be getting whatever that person has. Same thing with shrimp. If there is an infection in the tank, then it's much more likely to be spread <laughs> uh, as nope. there are just more shrimp closer together. 
Now, as long as you can avoid infections by ensuring good water quality, good filtration, not introducing new plants or livestock without having a proper quarantine period, then you'll be fine. But they're just factors that you have to be aware of if you are going to run your tank at a higher temperature. One last thing I want to cover is the belief that temperature can affect the sex ratio of the offspring. Now, there is one paper that claims to, that this is the case. There are various flaws in their experimental design that make me seriously question their results. The one reliable paper that I have is, again, that Carolina Tropea uh, paper that I referenced earlier, and they found no significant difference in the offspring of the shrimp at different temperatures. Again, I'll link that down below for you to take a look at yourself and feel free to ask any questions in the comments. I'm more than happy to discuss that. I may make another video on that topic, but we're not going to get into it here. There's just too much to cover. In conclusion, a heater is needed in two circumstances. The first is if the temperature of your tank frequently drops below 65 degrees Fahrenheit for long periods of time. And the second is if the tank temperature fluctuates significantly throughout the day. Outside of those two circumstances, there are still situations where you may want to have a heater. And so you should have a heater if you are trying to grow your colony as quickly as possible, either because, again, you love those feeding frenzies or if you're trying to sell. If you do want or need a heater, then I found this Orlushi brand to be very budget friendly and work well over the past few years that I've been trying it. It has temperature control, a light to indicate whether it's actually working, and it comes with an independent thermometer to make sure that the temperature is actually where you set it at. That's the end of this video. I hope you both enjoyed it and learned something useful for your future shrimp keeping needs. Uh, if you did have any questions or comments, then please leave them in the comment section below. I'd love to talk about this topic, talk about shrimp just in general, because I mean, they're awesome. Uh, so thank you, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.